Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Recently, I was contacted by Goblin King Games, the company that produces the tabletop skirmish game Moonstone. They have a Kickstarter coming out in early June this year for a new campaign book, some campaign cards, and an exclusive miniature for the game. Now, I don't normally talk about Kickstarters on my channel because I don't think I'm well positioned to talk about them, but Moonstone is a game that has been available for a few years. Furthermore, it's a game that I actually considered purchasing in the past, so I think I am well positioned to talk about the game and the quality of some miniatures that Goblin King Games have sent to me. Moonstone is a tabletop skirmish game for two to four players, and for people who know me and know my channel, it should be immediately apparent why Moonstone caught my eye. It's set in this lovely fairy tale world, and I love fairy tales and magic and mythology. But also, I absolutely love the work of Brian Froud and Terry Gilliam, and to a certain degree, Moonstone looks like Brian Froud and Terry Gilliam had a chat and then produced a miniatures game. Within the world of Moonstone, there are four main races. There are goblins, fairies, gnomes, and humans, and then there are also trolls and giants. And they fall into two main factions, and they are all battling to acquire Moonstone. And the game actually has this lovely mechanism where at the start of the game, you drop D4s on the table, and the D4s represent where Moonstone is buried, and the value of the D4 represents how deeply buried the Moonstone is and how far down you have to dig. But I digress. One Moonstone very much caught my eye. The reason I never purchased the game myself is because I do a lot of solo gaming where I will play two teams against each other and games that have secret information and bluffing and elements like that are a lot harder to do that with and Moonstone has this fascinating card combat system. It is very much a game where you want to play against other people. There is a starter set available for the game and of course the idea is you will eventually build up your team purchasing expansion packs and extra miniature packs to create your warbands. Today, we're going to be looking at the Goblin City box. This is a box of three miniatures. All of these miniatures do appear in that starter set. And if we look at the artwork on the cover of the box, you can see that Brian Froud influence that I was talking about. It is lovely artwork. We have down here the name of the group, the Goblin City, and then this moon here is the faction icon. And if we look at the reverse of the box, we can see renders of the three characters we are getting. There is Beaky Bobby, who may look a little bit like a flasher, but he's actually some kind of alchemist. He is wearing a Plague Doctor's mask, which makes him instantly cool. And then we have Vicious Midget, who is a diminutive fighter in a full suit of armor. And then finally, we have the star of the show. We have Doug the Flatulent riding on his war pug, which may be the best thing I have ever seen in a miniatures game ever. In the box, you get three character cards, one for each of the miniatures, and it has all of the stats, all of the unique abilities. And then at the bottom, you can see here there is a health bar, and you'll notice that some of the circles in the health bar are blue and some are clear. This is an interesting mechanism in the game because your characters will get a number of actions based on the blue circles they have in their health bars, but as they take damage, you will cross those circles off, and every time you cross off a blue circle, they will have one less action available to them. On the back of the cards, we have upgrades to special attacks, and this is part of the card combat system that I mentioned earlier. Then we have the miniatures themselves. This is Beaky Bobby. He is holding his coat open to reveal some lovely detailing inside his various potions. The miniatures are keyed. There's a hole in the face area here, which will marry up with the peg on the back of the plague mask. And I don't know if it's going to come out on camera, but there is a little indent in here, which is where this dagger will go. Next up, we have our diminutive warrior, the vicious midget, a two part miniature, just the main body and then the sword. Absolutely lovely detail and nicely done. Not a lot of cleanup on this, there's a little bit in here, but nothing too serious. Very, very nice. And then we have the main attraction, Doug the Flatulent. We have his lance with his flag. We have a shield and then the main part of his body. He is sculpted directly onto the pug's body there. On the second sprue, we have his head. We have the pug's head 
and just look at that that is beautiful there's so much character in that dog's face he looks so sad and then finally the third component on the frame the most powerful weapon at the goblin's disposal we have the pug's bottom so there we have the full contents of the goblin city box it's not enough for a full warband for a two-player game but certainly enough to get started with and as I mentioned before, all of these miniatures do come in the Moonstone starter set. The miniatures are lovely, there's so much character in them, but of course, we really need to see them assembled and painted, so that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to put them together quickly, and then I'm going to see how good they look with a quick tabletop quality paint job. And here's our first miniature, this is the Vicious Midget. Obviously, I haven't quite finished the base yet, after he has been varnished, I'll apply some extra flock and grass tufts and the like but um these miniatures have this lovely sort of retro feel to them and i thought my uh, classic slambo paint job would be a good fit for them only not using green of course i think he came out quite nicely next up we have the wonderful beaky bobby with his plague doctor's mask and his selection of potions I love this miniature, I think it's fantastic. And I'm quite happy with my paint job on this one. Well, I've put him in a dirty coat, gray feathers, simple brown paint job on the uh, Dreamcatcher, and the little reflective dots in the lenses of his mask. I think give this miniature a lot more character and finally the hero of the hour this is Doug the flatulent and his war pug again I did my slambo style paint job for those of you who don't know I did a hero quest painting guide for chaos warriors which is basically just lead belcher and then with colored washes over the top in this case I used a red wash over the lead belcher and I think you get a nice sort of retro look when you do that. And uh, look at the character in that pug's face. Absolutely lovely. These are really, really nice miniatures. They painted up very easily. They went together very easily without a lot of cleanup necessary. And with very simple paint jobs, I think they look lovely. They are the kind of miniatures that make you excited to play the game. And there we have it, three wonderful Goblin miniatures from Goblin King Games for use in the Moonstone Tabletop Skirmish game. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with these yet. I don't have the Moonstone rules book or the cards or enough other miniatures from the range to play that game. Although it is possible to download the rules book, so I may look into doing that at some point in the future. I think for now these are miniatures that will probably turn up in Dungeons and & Dragons and may even sneak into some ranges of Shadow Deep games at some point. Regardless, they were very fun to paint and I would like to thank Goblin King Games again for sending them out to me to take a look at and I hope you have enjoyed seeing them. As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to put a link in the video description to Goblin King Games so you can go and check out their current range of products and maybe take a look at their forthcoming Kickstarter which goes live in June. But that's it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.